This is our final theory lesson, lesson number four, part E, when we're dealing with electrical power. So in this lesson, we're going to examine how the efficiency of an electrical load affects the amount of power required to achieve a particular or certain task. And then we're going to just do a summary of the entirety of lesson four, parts A and E. So this part of the lesson, we're looking at 4.6. Uh, how does power change in relation to current voltage and resistance? And then our summary. So power change with current voltage or resistance. If a voltage to a circuit changes, the current will change. Therefore, the power taken by the circuit will also change. Now it's an interesting thing to understand at this point, a little bit about the physics. Um, all through this lesson, I've been pushing that uh, it is current that does the work. And by the way, it is current that produces the power. If there's no current, there's no power. Power is all built around the amount of work that the current does. So that's an important aspect to the physics that we need to understand. The electrical current is where the work is done, is where the power is actually dissipated or used. The next set of slides, we're going to explain much of how power changes. So the effect of power if the voltage changes. So we're going to look at power from a voltage perspective. Of course, the power does not change directly because of the voltage. If the voltage changes, therefore the current changes, therefore the power changes. So it's actually a two-step process when we're looking at voltage. So power equals the voltage squared divided by R. The power taken will change by the square of the voltage. So if the voltage changes to twice its normal value, the power increases by four times because two squared equals four. So if the voltage goes up, the current's gonna go up exponentially, therefore twice as much power is going to be produced. So if the voltage changes twice its normal value, power increases four times. So if voltage goes up double, then power must go up by the square, which is four. If the voltage falls to half its normal value, then the power will fall by four times or divide by four. Same applies, whether it's up or down, we're going to have this squared relationship between voltage and power because of what the voltage does with the current. So here's a simple little example of the effect of power if the voltage changes. Changing the applied voltage from 5 volts to 10 volts in a 10 ohm resistive circuit. So we've got a resistor. It's going to pump out some heat as a result of passing a certain current through it. So in our first example, I'll just turn the pen on. We've got 5 volts. So here's 10 volts. So five volts is about here. We've got five volts going across the resistor. We don't need to directly know what the current is, even though it is the current that's going to be pumping out this heat. So we know our formula that power equals V squared divided by R. So five squared divided by 10. It's gonna be 25 divided by 10 and we're going to be putting out 2.5 watts. So, well, what happens now if we double the voltage? So over here, we've now doubled the voltage, we're up to 10 volts, same 10 ohm resistor, and you can see we're putting out a whole heap more heat and in theory, we should be putting out 
four times the amount of heat. So let's do the math. The power equals voltage squared divided by R, so 100 squared divided by 10 gives us 100 divided by 10, and we've got 10 watts of power. And we've got an increase here of times 4. So the power has gone up by the square. So I've got 4 times the power by doubling the voltage. So the voltage has gone up by 2, but the power has gone up by 4 because of the squared relationship. So a little example, effects on power if the current changes now. Because power equals I squared R, power taken will change by the square of the current. So that is, if the current changes to twice its normal value, the power will increase by four times. If the current falls to half its normal value, then the power will fall by four times or divide by four. So let's look at a quick little exercise. Let's say we have a 25 meter extension lead has a total resistance of two ohms. Determine the power dissipated by a lead at five amps and 10 amps. So here's our little example. Here's our equation, power equals I squared R. And on the first time through, we're looking at our 5 amps, so here's 5 amps, so 5 squared times 2, so we end up with 5 5 is 25, multiplied by 2 gives us 50 watts at 5 amps. Now we do the same again, but this time we've now got 10 amps, and 10 squared is 100, multiplied by 2, and we've now got 200 watts. So again, a times 4 relationship on the current, all created by this I squared. And for me, this is the far more important power equation because this is direct with current. Remember, power equals I squared multiplied by R and it is the current it is the current that does the work so that's the important aspect to remember and for me this is the far more important power equation because it relates directly to the physics that does the work So effects on power if the resistance changes. If the voltage to a circuit is constant and the circuit resistance falls by half, the current doubles in value. That's because power equals V times I. The power taken by the circuit also doubles. So it's time for our summary. Energy and work are both measured in joules. Energy is the ability to do work, and work is done when energy is transformed from one form to another. So if we're transferring energy from electrical energy to light, that light is the work being done. Force is measured in newtons, and one newton is the force needed to accelerate one kilogram mass by one meter per second per second. Remember, motors are rated by their power and torque, where torque is measured in newton meters 
and power is measured in watts. And you'll see this stamped on the sides of electrical motors in particular. It tells you what the speed is and it tells you what the power of the motor is normally in watts or in kilowatts. Energy is either kinetic, that is, it's moving, or it's potential, it's stored. Potential energy becomes kinetic energy when it's used, and once it has been used, it is work done or mechanical energy. Power is the rate of doing work. That is, power is equal to work divided by the time. Where power is in watts, work is in joules, and remember, when we're working in joules, time is in seconds. The power is one watt if one joule of energy is transferred in one second. That's what defines a joule. A joule is simply doing one watt is transformed in one second. Mechanical power of a motor, P equals 2 pi nt divided by 60, and the 60 just allows us to use RPMs. So N is RPM, T is torque, and when we have all that information, remember we did efficiency in a previous lesson, proficiency percent, or efficiency percent, is the power out divided by the power in multiplied by 100 on 1. So efficiency gives a measure of power and an idea of the losses, the energy losses. Electrical power to a load equals the product of the current in the load and the voltage across the load. Product just means multiply. So power equals the voltage multiplied by the current. So power equals VI is transformed to make either V or I the subject and is combined with Ohm's law to give nine equations relating to power, resistance, current and voltage. In actual fact, it's 12 equations. I think they've got their little thing wrong there. It gives us 12 equations. Power equals V squared on R means power changes by the square of the voltage change. And as I mentioned before, it's not that the voltage in and of itself creates the power. It's a change in the voltage, creates a change in the current, which creates a change in the power. It also means that the power changes inversely with resistance. That is when the voltage is constant. So power equals I squared R means power changes by the square of the current. And as I said before, that's the big equation for me. Power is I squared R. That's the one that best describes the actual physics. The I squared R losses refer to the losses generated as heat in conductors or connections because we can measure the resistance easily and we often know the current without too much trouble. We often refer to the I squared R losses, are uh, the losses due to heat in conductors. So that brings us to the end of our theory lessons on DC power. I hope you've enjoyed the theory and uh, we have some exercises that follow and a practice.